I, another follow-up on that, I had this discussion with an attorney just a couple of days ago, and he said, but what about Bob Jones, and what about the religious school, which did lose its tax status for saying blacks and whites couldn't date? Um, I said, I mean, my understanding of the Bob Jones standard is that it was high enough that it would be unlikely to apply, but I don't know. Is, is that your take on Bob Jones, and how, how, how do you answer an attorney who says, what about Bob Jones? Right. It's, it's a completely different issue. The Bob Jones game, and it could, we could spend a whole lot of time on this very thorny area of law, but the bottom line is that in the case of, of Bob Jones, the issue is if an institution holds itself out as a public accommodation, welcoming everybody, taking government money, purporting to operate as a business, they put themselves in the category that then gets subject to <coughs> civil rights laws and, and other laws, fire safety laws, health code, etc. But that has nothing to do with religious ceremonies such as marriage. The government has never said, and nor did the Bob Jones stand for any kind of idea, that the government can go in and tell you what you have to teach, or what your religious views ought to be, or what the ceremonies ought to be. That's a whole other sphere, and the two really have absolutely nothing to do with one another. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with that. I, I teach constitutional law here, and I think it, my sense of Bob Jones is if Bob Jones University simply wanted to have a tax exemption as a church, they would actually be free to say, we would only marry people of the same race. That was the essence of their view. They were against interracial dating and, I guess, inter, I assume interracial marriage, too. But they were operating as a university and trying to get a tax exemption in that capacity, and that's where they got into trouble. And, yeah, it seems open and shut to me. I just want to offer the comment, too, that I think it's, it's important in this, this whole debate, and, you know, on both sides, the no on eight and yes on eight sides, to, um, to, to kind of recognize that there's a huge diversity of religious opinions and communities on both sides of the issues. I, I don't think we should speak in terms of one religion or even a few religions who are kind of, you know, leading the charge for it. There are many, unfortunately, many religious communities, none of whom are unanimous, who are supporting Prop 8. And at another point that those of us who oppose Prop 8 should say is that there are many religious communities who are against Prop 8 and who support same-sex marriage. So a, a, a common good faith comment or concern you often hear is that, well, I, I'm uncomfortable with same-sex marriage because it's a religious concern. And there is a way to kind of patiently and, uh, and in a in a civil way to try to converse and talk with people and point out that, well, that may be a religious concern for you or for some people, but are you saying that your view should prevail? What about all those people whose sincere faith in God or whatever other concept teaches them that, that these relationships should, are sacramental and should be celebrated? You know, you can't pick and choose between religions. And so, um, Given a choice, better for the government to treat everyone equally in the civil sphere, even if that offends some people, than for the government to treat people unequally in the civil sphere, given that that's also going to offend the different religious groups, and, and there's no way to keep everyone happy. So that I think those are just points to keep in mind, that um, it's really not a religious versus non-religious issue. And there, and there are secular people who, un unfortunately, again, are just against same-sex marriage. Thanks for a very effective talk.